Okay, so most probably this is something that you haven't seen before, so pay very good attention. This is this should be quite new for many of you guys. So imagine this is the equation that we're dealing with. What is the research question? We are regressing log wage on junior college. So this is the number of years in attending a two-year college. We call it junior college. And university, this is a number of years at a four-year college and experience, month in the workforce. We want to see what is the relationship between wage and these things, right? So you are, I don't know, you may have some undergrad college, man, or you may have some, I don't know, junior college. I think you cannot have both, or maybe if you, if you can. But we are, we are looking, we are, we basically we're interested to see what is the effect of junior college, having a one-year extra in junior college and wage, and university college and wage, right? Let's say we go ahead and use the OLS. These are the numbers. So what does the number suggest? Log level model, log level model. Positive, positive, not surprising. And let's an experience. Let's say we're not interested in experience for now. Okay. Let's interpret these two numbers. So it says that one extra year in junior college is going to lead to 6.6% increase in hourly wage or whatever wage is, right? Okay. What about this one? One extra year in university college is going to uh, lead to 7.6% or 7.7 .7 rounded up um, increase in the wage. Again, why percent? Why percent? Because it's a log level, right? So this sample, the data, this one sample suggests that the effect of, again, in the sample, I will put a hat here, effect of university year college is going to be greater greater than the effect of junior college in this sample okay let's say we don't care about the sample we want to make some statement about the population i want to see if in the entire population this is the hypothesis is whether one year of junior college is worth uh, exactly equal to one year of university college or alternatively this is the one that we're interested in, the one that i just explained i want to see if that's the case in the population University in the population. I don't put a hat there. I want to see in the alternative, so I put it in alternative because this is what I want to show. It's a one-sided thing. If a year of junior college is worth less than a year in university college, this this is very intuitive, right? It makes sense. You want to test it, right? So what is your hypothesis? Your hypothesis is going to be this alternative. If beta one minus beta two is less than zero. So do you see that? It's a linear combination of beta j's. So, for example, the null is going to be, this is just one example, beta 1 minus, we can think of beta 1, 2, 3, and etc. So, beta 1 minus 2 is equal to 0, and alternatively, it can be different things. Beta 1 minus beta 2 is not equal to 0, less than 0, greater than 0. You can think of any of them. In this example that we're going over, so we want to see if beta 1 minus beta 2 uh, is, I believe, less than 0. Okay. So this is a, what we call linear combination of beta j's, okay, it's less than zero, right? Basically beta one was beta uh, junior college minus beta uh, university college is less than zero. This implies that you, you want to test if in the entire population the effect of university year in college is greater than the effect of junior college on, on the wage, right? Okay, so I know the null, I know the alternative, so let's go ahead and construct our usual t-stat, right? Do you remember it was our beta hat minus beta under the null divided by standard error? Let's go ahead and do that. Here, instead of beta hat, I have a combination of beta hats, right? So it's going to be equal to what? Beta hat 1 minus beta hat 2 minus population parameter under the null. What is population parameter under the null? Zero. Divided by standard error of beta hat one minus beta hat two. Okay, so far so good because beta hat one is observable, beta hat two is observable. But look at that. The standard error of beta hat one minus beta hat two depends on the covariance as well. And usually statistical packages do not report that number. So here's a problem. Again, the numerator was fine, but the denominator, the standard error of beta hat 1 minus beta hat 2 depends on the covariance. And you remember one of the homeworks you, you, you showed this one, the variance of x plus y. What was it? Variance of x plus variance of y plus two covariance of x and y. This is the same story. 
and uh, it depends on the covariance and usually this covariance is not reported in the regression output so we are kind of stuck if because why because i cannot calculate the t stat so t stat we don't have it so what should we do we're going to use a method that's called a theta method. So let me actually give you the answer. We use theta met method here. We use theta method. Rewrite the model and theta is defined as beta 1 minus beta 2 here. Or you can, you can solve for beta 2 or beta 1, whatever you want. So beta 2 is equal to beta 1 plus theta. You rewrite so rewrite the model with theta now and um, we will find the the t stats for that theta the rest of it is exactly the same as this one number three because again it depends if it is one tail two tail uh, two, one tail test two tail test but at the end of the day, you, instead of working with two, you know, two coefficients, beta one, beta hat one, beta hat two, we're going to work with only one, one of them, which is called theta. Okay. So let's go again. This method is called theta method. Let's go ahead and see what is that trick. So we're going to define theta as beta one minus beta two. Why beta one minus beta two? Because this is the way that we define. If it was beta five minus beta six, go ahead and do beta five minus beta six, right? Okay, so here beta 1 minus beta 2 and we're going to test if this theta 1 is equal to it can be theta 1 or theta is equal to 0 or not equal to 0 in this case if it is less than 0 remember the alternative was beta 1 minus beta 2 less than 0 so what is beta 1 minus beta 2 theta 1 so let me go back to the whiteboard and write it here so null is going to be theta is equal to 0 alternative depend on how we are defining it can be theta not equal to zero greater or smaller okay now again this is a very good cheat sheet we can start from this next class we, we need to continue our discussion in terms of different hypothesis tests we, we we have two more models to add to it number six and seven uh, okay so if i have the theta i can uh, rewrite the entire equation remember this is our original equation beta 0 plus beta 1j plus beta 2 university plus beta 3 experience so let's rewrite it beta 0 plus beta 1 jc what is beta 1 now it's going to be theta 1 plus beta 2 right plus beta 2 university plus beta 3 experience okay so if i simplified it even further so what i get beta 0 plus theta 1 jc theta 1 jc plus beta 2 JC and beta 2 university. So beta 2 JC plus university. This is going to be a new variable. And beta 3 experience, nothing changes, right? So I will come up with a new model. I'm regressing log wage on junior college years and a new variable. This is junior college plus university college. I can give it a name. I call it total years of college, right? Guys, remember, these are all observable, you know, wage, junior college, university college. This is your data set, right? An experience. If I have these two columns in the data set, I can go ahead and construct a third column, call it total. And now I can regress wage on junior experience and total. This is what we're doing here. Wage on junior total and experience. Then I, I'm, I'm literally done. Remember, what was the coefficient that you were interested in? Theta hat. And where's theta hat here? Theta hat is the, co is the coefficient of junior college in this new model. So then I need to test if this theta hat is significant or not. That's it. And you're done. So uh, this is uh, how we do. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing in R, in, a, in the class, uh, in, in, in our face-to-face -face class next time. And, uh, but uh, I want you to realize that we're not doing anything special. We rewrite the model using theta and we have to do a new regression. The new regression is regressing wage on junior college and total college plus experience. This is 
I can simply run this regression in R and look at the new numbers. These are the new numbers. Remember, this is my theta. This is this is a new variable, so maybe this is my beta beta three. Was it beta three? Yeah, beta three and beta two. This is my beta two. Now the intercept didn't change. Well, beta one. So now it's as if we are doing uh, the hypothesis testing for one parameter. It's not it's a, it's not a linear combination of parameters. It's just one parameter, theta. Let's let's do that. How can I construct the t stat? Look at that. This number minus 0 0.01 divided by standard error. I get a t value. It seems to me that this is small, right? So t value is small. I can calculate the corresponding level of the t value. I like the p value approach a lot more than the, and than the comparing to critical value because it's, it, it tells me the exact significance level that I can reject the null. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate the p value. Remember, guys, how do I do p value? So this is my minus 1.48. I have to go ahead and calculate the area to the left, so it's probability this is a CDF, right? T minus 1.4a. If you do this in R, you will get that. And look at the number of observation. Degree of freedom is going to be 6,760. How many exponential variable I have? 3 minus 1, 4. So I have to do it minus 459. If you do that, you get this number, 0.7. Because it is an only one tail, so you don't need to multiply it by two. That's going to be. So my p-value is 7%. What can you say? This is the smallest significance level that I can reject the null. What does it mean? If your tolerance level is 10%, you're happy. You reject the null. Because your p-value, remember, the p-value was 7%. If your tolerance per, uh, percent was 5%, you fail to reject. If you're more conservative in this example, you fail to reject. If it is 1%, you fail to reject. Okay, so uh, what, what does it imply? It implies that if you're super conservative, if it is 1%, if you, as a researcher, your tolerance still is 1%, you fail to reject the null. What was null? The effect of uh, the junior year college and university year college is the same. So you reject the null, you get the alternative. What was the alternative? Uh, sorry, you failed to reject the null at 1%. However, at 10%, you reject it. So again, if your tolerance level is 10%, you reject the null, it means that the effect of university college is going to be larger than the effect of junior, uh, uh, junior college, two-year college, okay? So I, I understand this seems to be too much, but I want you to practice it, practice, practice, practice. It is, you know, it, it's, um, I don't want to call it, it's fun, but when you practice it enough, it becomes fun. You know, you can quickly interpret these numbers. And I hope that you realize that why we need these things, because at the end of the day, you want to make a statement about the entire population. And that statement, if it is valid or not, depends on if, if the one sample that you're working with is suggesting if it is significant or not, right? Okay, and we can also construct the confidence interval for theta. Again, uh, as you can see, for 5%, I think this is a number for 5%. For 95% confidence interval, it contains zero. So you see, it's consistent, fail to reject, because it is containing zero. So zero belongs to this interval. Again, everything should add, should add up, should match with each, with each other. All right, so this lecture, uh, in my opinion, was one of the most important ones, so please Rewatch this video multiple times before coming to the class because in the class I'm going to redo everything in R. So I'm not going to go over the slides. I'm going to start from the R. All right. Have a good one. Uh, see you in the class.